Hello, welcome to 7 Killdeer Road, Gillette, Wyoming. And before we get started, you're going to ask, what is a killdeer? All right, that's right, it's a bird. Okay, so let's get down to business. Today we're going to feature for you a three bedroom, two bathroom home that's 2,021 square feet. It sits on 3.19 acres, conveniently located. 10 minutes drive time from Gillette, Wyoming, 10 minutes drive time to Rosette, Wyoming to the east. So come on with me, join me on the tour, and let's see what this fabulous property has to offer. Okay, well thanks for coming in with me. First off, this foyer. Like, this is the grand entry into this home. Behind me, which we'll see here in a bit, is the addition that they put on that houses uh, a breakfast table and pellet stove um, but anyway as you come through the foyer we're welcomed by this living room I'm gonna point out features as we go that really add charisma and style to this home one is this knockout in the exterior wall like look how that couch perfectly sits within there and it's it's not an obstruction in the living room like it sets back in its nook provides you plenty of space out here in the living room to walk around there is going to be some things that the the seller is willing to leave behind for you uh, one of the things is in the living room here is this electric fireplace next in between the living room and the kitchen is this dining room area now i've measured this out this this the sellers had this dining room table custom made for this area. Again, they would leave this behind for you if you so wanted it because it was custom built for this area. But it, it's so large, like you can expand this and get a large group of people here. This table will go out to like 10 or 12 feet. Like it, it's meant for family sittings and group gatherings and having your friends over and entertaining. This space here, I mean, you expand this out, you got all the space in the world for, for the bigger gallery, gatherings, the holiday seasons, you know, whatnot for, for family meals and that. And then come into this kitchen. I mean, I'm not gonna say a lot about this kitchen, but it's, it's a gourmet kitchen. <laughs> it is so much fun in here. We got the extra lighting underneath the cabinets we got the extra lighting underneath that desk area, the extra lighting there. You got the dishwasher, you got the, the oven built in here, you got the microwave built in here, so it's not taking up room on your counters. Refrigerator set inside the wall here. You know, you got electric cooktop over here with the vent and the extra lights again, like, and so much room. like. My wingspan's about six feet, and I can't even, I can't even touch from the island to this this space over here on the counter. Like, this is a fun, fun kitchen. And I come around over here. I don't know if you've noticed it yet or not, but there's a set of bar stools sitting here. Look how they're perfectly tucked inside there. I can walk through here and not have to dance around the chairs or feel like I'm going to stub my toes. Like this was specifically built for ease. Like, I love this. And this island, like it's a sizable island, right? Like so much space here. This island by itself in the kitchen is a showpiece of its own. It measures out 38 inches this way by 70 inches this way. Underneath, we find an electric outlet over here on each end, we got cabinets where you can open the doors and store stuff. And then over here, we got these little knockouts. And I'm gonna point out this one specifically because the sellers have three fly swatters. You can literally walk by here and not see them, not touch them. Like you would have to know that they're there. But we all know when flies are pestering us, you want quick access to a weapon, right? So. Like that, it's just a beautiful spot. So my opinion, this island in this kitchen is a showpiece of its own. 
let alone the rest of the kitchen as it's as it's built like you're you're really going to enjoy it in the center of the home it measures to be approximately 10 foot high the walls on the outer edge measure eight foot the reason i bring that up here in the kitchen is look at the extra height in the cabinets here we see it on this wall especially you got the extra height for cabinets and then above the the hood we got the space for decorations Okay, off the, on the ladder side of the house, we got bathroom number two to my left. And it's a full bathroom with a tub shower. And then to my right are the other two bedrooms. Now, before we go in there, I'm going to point out something here real quick that we don't, again, we don't see this every day in the marketplace. Back to maximizing storage. We got closets here hall closets that mirror each other one's a coat closet the other one's set up as a pantry right now you can do what you want you can do what you will with these closets but i, I mention this because it's easy to skip by here and get into the bedrooms storage like maximize storage here speaking of that i will have a sketch of the floor plan available for qualified buyers. Bedroom number two, bedroom number three, pretty well mirror each other in size and the way they're laid out. Yeah, I believe each bed is at least a, a full size bed. Easily do queen size beds in each one. Maybe a king if you really crowded it, but you know, comfortably full size to queen size beds for sure. And then back here, another one of my favorite features of this home, the laundry room slash mechanical room in this space we're going to find the furnace it's a propane forced air furnace the propane tank is owned by the sellers you will be acquiring that propane tank uh, when you purchase this property the hot water heater sits in there we got the washer and dryer just so you know the washer and dryer are negotiable in the sale they can take them they will take them with them or you can purchase them depending on the offer that you make but look at all this like you got the deep wash sink you got all these cabinets back here you got this it opens up look how much they got five gallon paint jugs sitting in there like so much space back here now this when we go back outside we'll see this door going off to the west side of the house if you attach to the garage this is possibly the area that you're going to do it yes there is no garage here today there is room to do it over here on this side of the house so if you wanted a like a small two car or you know kind of there isn't a lot of limitations on the the garage size over here other than the setback from the lot line um but if you're going to attach it to the house, this is the one spot that you may consider doing it, um, which you could walk in through this door, drop your boots and your clothes right here, and uh, just be able to enter the home right into the kitchen. Okay, master bedroom. So this sits away. We got two other bedrooms on the other end of the house. This is on its own side. Got the master suite here, bathroom sitting that way. We got the closet here. I'm not going to call it a walk-in, but I'm going to call it a step-in. Like, you got enough room, you can step in here. You can get to the clothes down here, right here. So this is like being a midpoint between a walk-in closet and a closet that wasn't a walk-in closet. So I'm going to call it a step-in closet. And so much room. And there's more room to be had like you could if you needed more room and more hanger space you could lift that rack that clothes rack up clothes bar up and add a second bar to to hang clothes on so you, there's room to grow in that closet if you need to if not like there's still <laughs> there's still plenty of space uh here we got room this is not a king size bed but let's face it, there's enough room to do a king size bed here. We see the uh, end tables on each side of this bed as it sits. 
and still clearly plenty of space between the two, uh, between the bed and the, the end tables and the walls to, to get in the size of furniture that you may desire. Uh, the bathroom is a five piece master bath. You got the two sinks, a soaker tub, you got the stand up shower with sit down bench on each side. You got the extra storage with a, a cabinet back there behind the soaker tub. Extra storage above the soaker tub next to the window. Last feature inside the house before we go outside is I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about this addition that was added. They put the pellet stove in here. They got a breakfast nook sitting in here that you can have guests over or friends over or anybody and kind of meet them out here and enjoy the space out here uh, this this comes into the house prior to you entering the foyer so again if you got the muddy boots or the heavy winter clothes or whatever this is going to be a good spot to get rid of that i will leave you a tip in this room that the seller left me with that you should have a conversation with your insurance company about they specifically did this addition and put this pellet stove out here to reduce the cost of insurance on the home because that where the camera is sitting at the at this very moment there's still a door that's fire rated because that door is fire rated, because this addition is built the way it is, and the pellet stove sits out here, it will have an influence on the cost of your insurance, according to the sellers. That's what they reported to me through their insurance company. You should have that same conversation with yours. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I bring that up because I think it will be an important conversation piece as you're shopping for your insurance. Next. This window here off to my right, I'm gonna point it out when we go outside. There is a second location to build, a, in my opinion, a second location to build a garage. If you did so, you may be interested in removing this window and putting in a walkthrough door, like a 32 or 36 inch walkthrough door to come in from that side of the house into here if you wanted to build a garage on that side of the house. All of which is perfectly set up to do. So this room still has some options left in it, all of which you may choose to exercise once you make it yours. The other thing about the pellet stove. The owner has reported that they have used this for their primary source of heat since they put it in. They're, they are consuming approximately one bag of pellets a day. So if you're wondering the cost to heat this in the middle of winter, say from, if you want to run an average from November through April, you know, figure up how many days that is, what the cost of a bag of pellets is, that's about the cost of heating this home daily. The propane forced air was the primary source of heat when the house was built. This was added later on, but they have swapped using the propane is the primary to this. You can do as you will or you want. I'm just telling you how the sellers are living in this home today. As we walk around the home, we see that they've done a nice job with balancing the level of concrete with landscaping. Pay close attention to the concrete. It's not lifting, it's not settling, it's not cracking like it is mint condition. Off of the addition on the east side, is a nine foot by 12 foot concrete patio next to the house of which they've got a spa tub or in your case you might be interested in a hot tub put in there on the west side of the home you'll find the propane tank as i mentioned inside it's going to be your propane tank when you buy the property it is privately owned the importance of this though is you will be able to choose your propane provider you are not subject to renting it from somebody else and being subject to their prices. Okay, we're on the west side of the house right now. 
inside when we was in the laundry room mechanical room i had mentioned an area outside where you could do garage number one this is it right here they're using it for parking right now uh, but you could attach a garage to this side of the house and you still got plenty of room you'd have to move this propane tank you'd have to move this 500 gallon tank back to the back side of the house pro is the likely place placement if you build a garage here but you got plenty of room you know you could step out here you're gonna have some setbacks from you know the lot line here but there's you can easily put a two-car garage right here at least and make it as deep as you want um, so this would be my opinion one of the options to build a garage that you may be desiring or looking for if you need the ramp this is a 32 inch ramp uh, you could you, you know handicap or elderly this goes in the back door to the laundry room uh, this is a good place to talk about the roof and the siding i have the information on the roof and the siding redone in 2019 asphalt roof the siding is steel siding comes with a lifetime warranty i have that information with me will be giving to you when you purchase the property the lifetime warranty includes a guarantee against fade so we, we traditionally know steel siding to fade this particular company warranted against that storage shed number one measures out to be eight foot by 11 foot these storage sheds were built for wyoming they're windproof they're fireproof to most degree they're varmint proof they're steel check this out and locking doors i dare you to find me another storage shed that has locking doors on it as i said built for wyoming this particular shed has two windows in the back they got stuff stored in here we're not going to get access to that today but it is fun i mean nice safety feature that if the wind's blowing a little bit that door is going to stay locked open storage shed number two measures out six foot by six foot the livestock barn here measures 34 feet by 40 feet it is a modular or yeah modular style barn to where it was built off site brought here sat and then bolted together we'll see this inside when we go in here in a second this end and the other end sliding doors eight foot tall ten foot wide it is electrified we see electric run out here and i'm going to mention this here here's about as good a spot as any to mention all this all of the electric lines here are buried you're not going to find overhead power lines across the property this the particular service out here is 100 amp i believe uh, coming into the livestock barn the sellers they didn't have livestock they've been using it for a work shed or a storage the sellers have been using this barn for storage and as a, a work shed to do crafts and projects and woodwork and whatnot they got tools in here um, right here to my right is a water hydrant it's one of three I'm going to disclose to you right now they are not hooked up the seller had a new water line brought from the the water meter into the house they bored that all in it's a brand new water line as of two or three years ago okay when they did that they dis they unhooked the water service coming to the water hydrants out here to the Krell area they are going to give you a five thousand dollar allowance at closing to use for reactivating the water lines to the to the water hydrants or any other improvements you choose 
if you make the right offer, they're just going to set aside in escrow five grand for you to use. And that's going to be important for those of you that have to get a mortgage. If you're paying cash, you can do it. You can, we can work this however you want. But if you have to get a mortgage, let's, I just want you to be clear that the seller is agreed to up front and acknowledging that this could be a, a potential problem for you or a potential concern for you not having the water hydrants hooked up we will have the five thousand dollars sitting there in escrow for you as we're looking through the livestock barn there is a cub cadet riding lawnmower here the seller is willing to leave that with the property as a part of the deal it's a 50 inch cut that can be incorporated into the sale when you buy this property. Inside the livestock barn, it is set up for five livestock pens or four pens and a staging area for all your tack and equipment, however you want to arrange it. With the alleyway that goes from end to end, from one door to the other door, and it runs east to west. Right here where I stand, this is what I would consider corral number one. There is a fence that goes from the corner of this barn over to the corner next to the storage shed. The fence will be left here. The sellers, like I said, have never had livestock, so they had no reason for it to be here. This particular corral area measures out to be approximately 64 feet by 64 feet. What I would consider corral area number two or miniature pasture number one, however you, your viewpoint is. Uh, I don't know the dimensions on it, but they, the sellers had set it up with like a horseshoe pit, picnic table, stand-up table, fire pit. Like they, they've been using this area as more of recreation area than, than a pasture or a corral. Um, like I said, I don't know the measurements of it, but uh, you'll see, you know, the, the swing underneath the tree you're going to see all this engaging area that that they've made it the, their own space right but for you 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 may use it for your livestock and there is uh between there and the interstate the the state of wyoming has put up woven wire fence with barbed wire on top of it for your livestock so it does meet the standards of being a livestock friendly fence this corral area measures out to be 40 feet by 40 feet approximately, and this lean-to shed uh, measures 14 feet by 14 feet. Outside of this area would be pasture number two, uh, miniature, miniature pasture number two. Again, I don't have the measurements of it. One thing as we walk around the house too that you should notice is my opinion, perfectly elevated foundation as we circle around we got good positive drainage away from the foundation it encumbered the little bit of hill that was already here brought that into attention still getting the water away from the foundation so why am I standing next to what looks like a telephone box you may ask it's a fiber optics box I'm excited to announce that Two weeks prior to shooting this video, the Freedom Hills subdivision got fiber optics brought into all the properties. Now here's what's key. It is not hooked up to the house. This is the end of the line right here. But I share it with you because you're gonna have the option when you buy this property of tying into that box and running fiber optics right into your house. So if you need good, strong, fast, hardy, fiber optics that's not dependent on the satellite dishes through the free air you got it right here you'll see through some of the video outside there's a lot of antiques a lot of yard art I'm just gonna tell you some of it may be here when you buy the property some of it's gonna disappear I already know some of it's gonna disappear they've already told me what is important to them what isn't so important to them what i want you to know is some of it may be here when you do purchase the property and it's going to be incorporated into the 
landscape. I do want to make mention about the Freedom Hills subdivision in itself. It's a really mature subdivision in the fashion that it has a service and improvement district that covers the cost of roads, trash, things of those natures. The, those fees are encumbered into the property taxes. So if you compare this property to maybe some other properties, you're gonna ask, why is the taxes higher? Well, the trash is included, road maintenance is included, things like that. Second, the Freedom Hill subdivision has one of the best water wells in the county. Really sophisticated water district. The fee on that's $45 a month at the time of this recording. I will also add that the city of Gillette water system, the the Madison pipeline has come in here and you have access to that as well per the subdivision, not you as a landowner, the subdivision as a whole. So, and I mention these things because it adds to the characteristics and the complexity of the water district itself. You're going to enjoy features here that a lot of country folks don't have access to. Last but not least, when you come for your on-site visits, a listing agent will be present. And prior to you coming to visit, a letter of credit will be required to, upon entry of the property and for you to view the home. There is a security system here, uh, all of which will be disclosed to you once you come visit the property and what it looks like. Um, but the sellers have asked that nobody drive up or get close to the property or even try to knock on the door without a listing agent being present and again a letter of credit showing that you either got the cash or the ability to to get a loan once we commence on a contract thanks make it a great day